Hey everybody, so I have Xander back there today and if he starts shouting, don't mind him. He's pretty happy. I think he's growing some teeth now, so he's like chewing on his hands and stuff. Anyway, okay. Um, I've had several people write in with questions related to what I think about marriage and the issues around that. So I thought I'd just make a little video about it. So Chris and I have been married for four years now. Um, it's not that long compared to my grand his grandparents who just celebrated their 65th wedding anniversary or mine who've been married for 54 years. Whoa. <laughs> it's a celebratory shout. Anyway, so in a way, marriage is definitely something I'm still learning about, um, both as we live together and from the example of older couples we know, um, as well as studying the Bible and other resources. Chris and my relationship to each other is based, of course, on our love to each other, um, but very importantly, also on our shared faith and commitment to live in church community. And I actually believe that marriages can thrive best in a society or community where there is mutual support, not just within families, but more widely in the community, and that God's will for all people to live, to be able to live in such a society. The examples that you're raised with or see around you have a greater impact on your own marriage than anything you could read. This is just to say that I know that I am very fortunate that there are not the stresses on our marriage that many people have to contend with because we live in community, we don't have to worry that we won't be able to feed our, um, our kids or, you know, pay for a house or mortgage and that kind of thing, um, that there will be a good school available for them. And we know if one of us were to have serious health condition, um, our family would be taken care of. So to the basics. I believe that marriage is a lifelong bond between a man and a woman and that it's part of God's plan for creation, most obviously because that's how children are born, but also because the love within a marriage is something unique and not to be found in any other relationship. And one thing that makes it unique is the intention and the promise for it to be lifelong, which is something we take very seriously. And actually, I think, <laughs> he's really making a noise. Um, so I'm trying, where was I? <laughs> okay, so marriage is something that we take very seriously. And actually, I think part of what makes it possible for us to work out the problems that do come up, because there's no, there's no option to solve, to not solve your problems. <laughs> Xander, I don't know if I'm going to have you on, on my videos anymore, because you're making such a ruckus. <laughs> anyway, so there's no option to not solve your problems, if that makes any sense. Um, in the Gospels, Jesus has some very straightforward teachings about divorce that I think are non-negotiable. And I know that for many people, this can sound harsh. And even Jesus' first disciples found some of his teachings harsh or hard, difficult. Um, but many of his other teachings are just as hard humanly speaking, to follow, like not to worry, to be meek, you know, turn the other cheek. I mean, that's pretty tough stuff to serve God rather than money. But that doesn't mean we have an option to not do it. Jesus also clearly says that sex outside of marriage is a sin, and this goes for sexual relations of any kind. Again, it's, it's a hard teaching, but I think it's a crucial part of trying to follow Jesus is to live in obedience to his teachings. And I can also say that I look around me at the church community I'm part of where we do take these things seriously and I see families with two parents raising their children, supported by older couples and single people and trying to support them in return. You know, God's plan is beautiful when I see these things. Now, having said all this, I don't judge anyone. And I want to say that again, I really don't judge anyone. That's not my place um, to do that. And we're really warned against throwing stones when none of us is free of sin. I personally, and Chris would agree with me, and Chris feels the same, um, I know myself to be in need of grace and mercy because when you think of the second part of God's greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself, 
and you measure yourself by that and you realize, at least I do, how short I fall of it. And I don't know that God sees breaking his commands in one area as any less serious than breaking them in another area. But love demands truthfulness and I think that it does, does no one any favors to explain away Jesus' um, very real and demanding teachings around marriage to fit our wishes and desires. I do want to make it clear that if someone who is divorced wants to join our community, they would certainly be welcome. Similarly, if someone identifying as gay or lesbian felt called to join us, they would be very welcome. But they would be expected to hold to the same biblical standards that all of us members here do and to take the same vows of poverty and chastity, which, like I said, we understand as within marriage and obedience, and all of these can be hard. I'm not saying that everyone here has Valentine's Day every day. I know plenty of couples here who have gone through really rough times in their marriages. Xander, what's up? Do you want to come to mommy? Cool. Come here. Mm. Sorry, just gonna grab Xander because he's making such a howl. Mm, love you. Gonna smile? <laughs> so I, I was saying before, I know a lot of couples here who have gone through really rough times in their marriages and some who've been separated for months or years before they were able to reconcile. And we also have single parents um, who have joined our community. In these situations, the support of neighbors and the community is even more important, um, although the community can never fill the hole of a missing parent. Anyway, these are just my thoughts, and I hope that they answer all the questions that I got on this topic. And that's all I have for now, and I'll see you next time. You gonna say goodbye? Weave at the camera. Bye. Love you. <laughs> You're supposed to smile, Xander. Can you smile? <laughs> you can't make a kid smile if they don't want to.